Okay. This fly is a pheasant tail nymph. It's a gold bead head. I'm tying it on a S80 or a Daiichi 1530 hook. It's a heavy wire hook. I'm going to use a red thread and this is going to be the 6 aught Superfly or 6 aught uh, Uni thread. Red in color. I do like the red color. The material, I put on a little 14 or 16 hook. I'll put on either a 332nd gold bead or a 764th gold bead. Um, pheasant tail is going to be the body. And uh, on this short one, you don't need a lot of pheasant tail. We need just a little bit. I, I cut off about a quarter inch of pheasant tail. It's probably a half a dozen to eight strands. And that's what we're going to wrap the body with. Now, when I do this fly, I like to have the tail almost as long as the body. Um, I don't like a really short, tiny butt of a tail. And I like it to stick out. When I'm tying this, because there's only pheasant tail for body, pheasant tail for tail, I'll tie it on at the butt. My wire is going to be a gold wire, small in size. Or I like to use this uh, hot yellow wire. Now, if I want this fly to be very bold, I'll use the hot yellow. If I want it to be a little more bland, I'll use the gold wire. Now, I'll tie that in, hang it out the side on the wraps. If you put your finger on the back side of the pheasant tail, on the back side of the hook, it'll actually flip it around under the hook. And you can wrap it with this short hook. I probably only need three or four wraps. And I'm finished the body. I like to have a little taper. So if you add one more wrap near the neck, which is right behind the bead, then you'll get a little bit of a tapered look on it. We'll get rid of the excess. Do a couple more wraps over top of those uh, stubby ends that we left there. Now, very interesting and very important that you wrap your wire absolutely opposite of your pheasant tail. The opposite wrap holds it in place and it actually makes it more visible. And you'll notice I'm coming up to the thread. I'm going to go past the thread and give it two wraps ahead of the beat of the thread. Tighten it down so it really cinches down into the neck. And then you can just grab your thread and wrap it in the same direction you're wrapping all your materials. It locks in the wire that you wrap backwards because you did two wraps in front of the thread. I don't have to go over top like I normally do. On this one again, I'm going to wiggle the wire and break it. I'm not going to bring a pair of scissors along to actually... Um, cut it off. Now, on this, this fly is called the JJ Special, and uh, the last thing that I add to it is a little tuft of mallard flank or mallard uh, breast feather. It's this little white tuft on top of the fly, and this is almost a must. If you run out of tuft on this fly, it doesn't seem to work at all, hardly. But uh, we want a little white tuft left on that fly. I do like to leave the thread visible, like this red thread. I'll build up the neck a little bit to make sure that they can see the red thread in there. And I'll tie it off, and that is... All the steps it takes to tie this JJ special pheasant tail fly. We started using this fly in lakes and we 
transferred it over to the river and the river because it has such a large number of mayflies this fly works great just about all year long if you've run out of hatches and you want to drift it in a back eddy or in a run the fly works fantastic just about anywhere and everywhere and uh, hanging it under an indicator in the back eddies in May and June is phenomenal fishing it in the runs in uh, August September October is good um, when the fish are feeding on little tiny bugs like they are now this is September a smaller pheasant tail works when they're feeding on bigger bugs you use a bigger pheasant tail now I tie this size 16 14s and 12s so it depends on which one you actually want to use certain time of year you will use a different size of fly